So hello all, a very good morning and good evening to every each and one, every one of you. Thank you all for attending the first joint uh, Toastmaster session between the OITC and Great America speakers. And uh, now I'd like to call the president, uh, Charlene, to give opening remarks. And also Hin too. Hin, do you yeah. want to start or you want me to start? Go ahead, please. Okay. Good morning and good evening. What a good way to start the weekend, especially you guys over there. <laughs> I still have to work today, I guess. Who knows? Social distancing bring us even closer. Remember uh, a few years ago, uh, Abhijit, we moved to a much bigger conference room. It's uh, harder to hear from a distance and even harder to see expression when you hear a speech. As a speaker, I had to learn to work on my vol uh, voice volumes and exaggerate my body language and all that. Now in a little screen, I can see everyone up close and personal. And I can hear exotic stories from India and I can see you guys across the ocean. How nice. As the saying goes that um, when a door closes, another one opens. We just have to move our gaze away from the old doors and focus on the rising horizon. So without further ado, let's uh, party. No, 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 I mean, let the meeting start. To you, Hint. Thank you, Charlene. Uh, I, first of all, I'd like to ask everybody in this room, do you guys wake up this early or <laughs> did you just wake up for us? Because if you woke up for us, then the onus is even more for to be more grateful and thankful. Is 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 it your usual waking up time? Because not I for me. I don't know about that. Like quite <laughs> wide open eyes. I don't see anybody sleepy. Oh, Wait for God, it. You will see me up. sleeping. <laughs> I hope my speech doesn't put you to sleep. Well, this is great, and as uh, Charlene says. When one door closes, another opens. We just have to move our gaze from the closed one to the open, open one. This is great. I never uh, could have thought that we, we would be doing this, a joint meeting uh, between the two office, offices. Thank you very much, Abhijit, for germinating that idea. And whoever else did that, because I'm not sure if somebody else put that in Abhijit's mind. If they did, thank you very much to them also. You, you don't need to put anything on Abhijit's mind. <laughs> All right. With that, let's uh, let's get the meeting started. Let's have some great speakers and listeners on board. Thank you. Oh, sorry, my bad. I will hand over the baton to our Toastmaster of the day, Akshaya. Thank you, Toastmaster Hin. On the twenty third of April, two thousand five. At the click of a button, the screen was filled with the face of a young man who was dressed in a black sweatshirt and a not so befitting red stole was garlanding his neck. He was awkward for the first minute and then his disheveled hair caught all the attention and completely came to his rescue. He stuttered for a minute and he said, Oh, all right. Uh, well, behind me, you see some elephants, of course. We do some. We do see some elephants in its background. Oh, these creatures have some extremely, extremely large, large trunks, and that's cool. That's pretty cool, he says. Oh, of course, they do look pretty cool. And then he goes, "Well, that's all that we have from this video." And then the screen closes. Any guesses what I'm talking about? It's the first YouTube video. founder. Yes. Yes. David Karimi. Yes, this was David Creamy, and this was the first ever YouTube video which went live. But today, if this was to be made, how will this look? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for dropping in. Before we start the video, do not forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, do whatever you want. But this was 15 years ago. The beauty of a first time is that it quickly disappears into a million others. So now let's get the day started with a little quiz. I'm going to throw some quick lines and let us see if we can guess what is the beauty of these lines. Okay. First, this 
dialogue goes like this. Dr. Watson, come here. Does it ring a bell? Sherlock. This was the first ever dialogue that happened on the world's first ever telephone call which was, which was made. So we're talking about first. The clue here is somewhere these are related to a first. Let me throw the next one. This is very easy. That is a one small step for a man, but a giant leap for a mankind. Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong. Yes, Neil Armstrong. And these were the first words which were uttered when he stepped on the moon. This one is very easy for Americans. First in war and first in peace and first in the hearts of all countrymen. Repeat it once more. First in war and first in peace, first in the hearts of all countrymen. I'm sorry if I'm offending some Toastmaster rules here. Uh, so this is a part of a eulogy of a very famous American president. Any guesses? So he was the first ever president who was unanimously elected to the office without any election. Guesses? George Washington. Stand up, stand up to flex our GK muscles. Yes, exactly. Some, someone got this right. It was George Washington. Barack Obama? <laughs> no, it was George Washington. <laughs> George Washington. He's the first president. <laughs> oh. So with that, let's pause our quizzing session for a minute and it's time to get, uh, get the day started. A stroke of gratitude and shades of nostalgia, we are ready for our first hello. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you that today I'm going to be assembling an army against Napoleon Bonaparte. Guess what? Napoleon Bonaparte was extremely scared of cats. He was aerophobic, but my army today is full of pet parents. They seem to be, the, all their first memories are associated with their pets. So headlining this jury is our general evaluator of the day, Toastmaster Lehova. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for our general evaluator of the day to introduce us to the panel, Toastmaster Lehova. I'm sorry if I got your name wrong. <laughs> Thank you, um, our Toastmaster. Very interesting. Um, opening. Yeah, I, as, as she mentioned, uh, uh, my first pet was the uh, cat. Uh, I, um, I got the pet when I was young, when my parents uh, brought it uh, there. I had a uh, much of fun with, uh, with him. And uh, my sister actually loved the, uh, uh, my sister, um, she was, uh, uh, she, her, her astrology is uh, mouth, so she's naturally scared of cats. So my one of my fun when I was young is uh, uh, at night I will just throw the cat uh, into her bed and she will scream and uh, ran away. Um, I had her for I had the cat for some time, but then one day uh, I heard a big noise. Um, there was people chatting and my cat was screaming and hiding in the, a small house in our, uh, in our yard. Um, and the end of the, we found the reason. The reason is that the cat, uh, uh, in the daytime or next time, he will sneak out into the, um, into that person's uh, house and ate the rabbit of uh, that neighbor. So the neighbor was really, really, really angry and uh, swear they are going to kill the cat. And we were so afraid and scared. So we, so we, so we had to send the cat away. Um, that's uh, my, that's my first experience uh, of the cat, uh, of the pet. I really missed it um, when I was young. But now after that, I feel uh, now I never raised uh, any Pet, uh, any pet, any cat pet, because I feel I, I cannot not forget that the neighbor told me that the cat even ate a rabbit. That seems like so cruel. <laughs> With that, uh, I would like to introduce my um, combined joint evaluation team. First one is our grand honorary, Bagov. Let uh, welcome Bagov to introduce the role of grammar rearing. 
Good morning, good evening, might be even good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters. I am Bhargav and I am going to be the grammarian for today's session. Well, in real life, I hate to be a grammar Nazi. But then my today's role necessitates that I be a grammar Nazi and look for each of the mistakes you make in your speech. I keep my eyes and ears open, scrutinize each and every mistakes you make and give a report at the end of the meeting. The word of the day is elucidate. Elucidate means to explain something or to make something clear. I'd like each one of you to use the word of the day as much as possible in your speech. And I'd like to request the speakers to cheer the speaker whenever he uses the word of the day by giving a thumbs up or pressing the thumbs up icon in your screens. Coming to the theme for today's session, it is fantastic firsts. I've had, I've have had so many fantastic firsts in my life, but one thing I remember the most and like the most is my first trek. That day I hiked this small hillock outside Bangalore. Well, it was not a very large mountain or something, but then it took a toll on my legs. I was breathing really, really hard by the time I reached the peak. But whatever I saw from the top of the mountain was amazing. Until then, I was thinking that I was a thalassophile, a lover of seas. But then I realized I might as well be an orophile. And that day really changed my life. I started taking passion in trekking and trekking is my life. With this, I'm going to pass on the baton to the R counter for today's session. The R counter for today's session is Sushma. Sushma, I'd like to pass on the baton to you. Hey, thanks, Barga. Good morning and good evening, Toastmasters. I'll be your R counter and I'll be keeping track of the filler words that you'll use today, like us, um, so's likes, you knows, and things like that. I have a hard time hearing, uh, like I'm, there I go. <laughs> I have a hard time hearing some of the, in, um, our Toastmasters from India. It's, your voice is breaking off, especially Akshay, I couldn't hear most of your questions, sorry. Uh, I'll try my best to keep track of your uh, ass and ums during this meeting and present my report towards the end of the meeting. And do we pass back to evaluator? Because that's what we do usually. I don't know who is next in line. So back to you, Liwa. Sure, thank you, Sushma. Uh, our next function road is a timer. Uh, Max, Max, will you we'll introduce your role, please? Good morning and good evening, uh, fellow Toastmasters. I am your timer for today, and my job is to keep track of time. In order to do that, I have a few backgrounds that I'm going to use. For when you reach the minimum of your speech, which is five minutes, or your table topics, which is one minute, or your evaluation, which is two minutes, I will change my background to green. When you reach the middle, I will change my background to yellow. And when you reach the limit of your speech, which should be seven minutes, I'll change it to red. I'll give my report at the end of the session. Back to you, Madam Evaluator. Thank you, Max. Last role in my team is the videographer, and I volunteer to take that role as well. I will just, uh, I already started recording the session. After the session, I will upload the, um, the video to our uh, shared folder and send the video link to you guys. Thank you. Next, uh, I will give the stage back to our Toastmaster Akshaya. Thank you, Toastmaster Nihua. Am I audible enough? I, th I just thought I'll do a quick video yeah. and audio check. Thank you. Thank you. So now, as we 
geared up to assemble an army against Napoleon Bonaparte, we have another person who's joining us. So joining the bandwagon is Toastmaster Neha, who's going to be the evaluator for Toastmaster Hill. When I asked Neha about what she would like to share, when I, uh, uh, she had a very interesting story. In fact, she wrote a blog for an answer, and I felt I should share it in the greatest detail that I can possibly think of. She told me that she is neither an animal person nor a sea animal person, but her favorite fantastic first hand experience was the time she tried to touch and feel a stingfish or a stingray. So she felt the excitement of a child in a candy store. I hope she's swinging in more maturity and also attaching some pair of eagle eyes to look into Toastmaster Hint's speech. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to welcome Toastmaster Neha. Toastmaster Neha, who, who will be the first evaluator for Toastmaster Hint to reach this, to read the project objective. Thanks, Akshya. Hello, everyone. I'm going to be evaluating Hint's uh, speech today, and he is doing the uh, persuasion speech. The objectives of his speech are that he has to clearly define how Toastmasters envisions mentoring. The second purpose of his speech is to share some aspect of a previous experience as a protege. So uh, other than that, he has asked me to focus on the vocal variety that he uses in his speech. So I'm going to try my best to evaluate his speech. Uh, back to you, Akshya. Thank you, Toastmaster Neha. So let's have some quiz corner quickly before we head towards Toastmaster Hill's speech. So he here is again a little quiz about a, fam about a famous first time. Dear darling, don't worry. This is just me. I miss you and I love you. And the reply came back as, who are you? Why are you sending me this? Any guesses about what this could be? First of text. Course, looks like Yes. So these were the first texts which were sent on AOL, on American Online, by, by the inventor to his wife. And his wife is completely, completely scared as to who is this person and what is this? And we have the next question before we quickly jump to Toastmaster Hint's uh, introduction. Broken laser printer, $14, 1995. Broken laser for sale. $14.1995. eBay? Yes. Did someone say eBay? <laughs> Did someone say eBay? Uh, hello? Yeah, somebody said it eBay, but I don't know who. Oh, I said eBay. Oh, yes. No, no. <laughs> who was okay, ever sale which was posted on eBay? Okay. Uh, this was the first ever sale which was posted on eBay. So joining the Napoleon army is Toastmaster Hind. Toastmaster Hind was extremely scared the very first time he left his house to Kota, but he recollects the memory saying that it has made him the person that he is today because it was the first time that he was staying away from his parents. And even today when he thinks about it, he is kind of sure that he made the most of his first day away from home. So let us welcome Toastmaster Hin with his L2 P3 speech, the accidental protege, Toastmaster Hin, the accidental protege, Toastmaster Hin, the accidental protege, to Toastmaster Hin. Over to you, Toastmaster Hin, and good luck with this speech. Thank you, Toastmaster Aksha, for introducing me thrice. Before I begin my speech, I would just like to say one quick thing. This is very cute. An amazing way to clap for everybody. This is just way too cute. Thank you, everybody, for doing that. All right. It was a sunny afternoon, and I was sitting on a lunch table. The lunch was going to be special that day because it was a Sunday. Across the table from me was sitting my friend. As we were waiting for the lunch to be served, we started talking. That was basically our favorite pastime talking about practically everything. So my friend asked me, and it was weird that the question came up so, so long after we had known each other. My friend asked me, why did you take maths 
after your 10th standard i responded after thinking about it a little bit i like math i like solving problems and there's some accomplishment to it so my friend they continued they said would you take math if it was not important to your grades i acted like act, i acted as if i was thinking a lot and then with a solemn thinker's face i responded yes years later now i realized that i was not entirely truthful that day a big part of why i studied at least in primary school and all the way till 10th standard even was to get good grades and be praised for it and sitting at that lunch table back then 10 years ago a part of me knew that good morning to us masters of great america speakers and my fellow orators i hope you had a good day up until a week ago i used to think that i knew mentoring i knew mentorship that i understood learning but as i took up this project and started thinking about it i realized that maybe i was wrong through most of my life i have had teachers i have had tutors sometimes those tutors were books or online tutorials but there was one thing in common in all these cases i was told i was told what to do and i was told how to do it and i understand it is not easy for there to be a yearning for learning from a very young age because we don't have much to go by and i think that is why there is a system of education but the system brings us to our adulthood the system tells us i was and and i'm still part of that system but not wholly not completely anymore true learning comes from within and i think that's an ideal belief to hold and that might not be true for everybody and which is fine but learning when it is sought for yields better efficiency i have over the period of this project realized that i have never reached out to people to learn and that is why i concluded at once that maybe i never had mentors in my life who guided me through the discovery of something of my own now let me go back to that lunch table my friend they used to ask me a lot of questions and i used to answer to all of them i used to answer because i believed that my answer mattered to them the questions were asked by them but they would become mine they would make a home in my mind my friend nurtured the question but i asked them they nurtured it until i asked them to myself and then i started questioning everything and if it sounds like a depressing thing to do if it sounds like a wrong thing to do then trust me it's not in my friend i met my first accidental mentor who led me to my first self learning i learned that one of the most important things in life is to question not just what we don't know but more crucially and much more importantly what we do years later i was once again sitting on a table not a lunch table this time i was sitting on a table and across from me was sitting another friend of mine a friend whom i had known for few months by then i was rambling about my own beliefs and understanding of how i think the institution of marriage is just a social utility and nothing else and they were nodding along my friend was nodding, was nodding along, along to to my words they were listening with complete intent and as much interest as can be given to anybody's words for me it was natural to assume that they agreed with me that they shared in my belief in my interest or in my perspective i would talk to them about my opinions of the world my conclusions that i had drawn over the past 27 years of my life i told my friend about all the radical beliefs that i have had i had till that time and they still nodded along they listened to me with all the intent there was one point when i thought to myself this is uncanny where there is no difference there is indifference 
this can't be true it was months later that i figured out that my friend didn't believe in half of the things that i said and i realized not as an epiphany but as a slow learning that human connections are not made by finding likings but by accepting respecting and devoting an understanding to the differences and that is when i found my second accidental mentor they didn't instill a learning in me by telling me to listen they did so by asking me if i wanted to i learned not by an active effort i learned that a thing is a thing not what's said about the thing i learned that judgment is easy and understanding is quite opposite of that i learned that listening is the most important gift that you can give to anybody our communities they make us ready for the job for the survival and most of the time we say that our behaviors our personality is based on stems from our past circumstances our situations our experiences i also have my circumstances and my situations to credit for my behavior my personality or my world view but in retrospect i had some truly great people although they might not call themselves that truly great people helping me do that i talk about my world view the way i do because i think it germinated within me and it germinated within me because somebody prodded me to do so the learnings of your life will always be found by you but they can always be catalyzed by somebody if you're lucky i was thank you Oh, did you pass the badge to me? I think I just lost oh, internet connectivity in between. Hello. Oh, right. sorry, Akshay. Yeah, it's back to you now. Oh, thanks. Uh, uh, so with that, uh, we don't do this in our Bangalore meeting. So we are going to take one minute to complete evaluation slip, wherein everybody can put in their feedback and send it to Toastmaster Hind as a mail as to what you felt about his speech. So this is something which we don't do in our Bangalore meetings. Uh, so for people who are attending from Bangalore. Uh, so after every speaker, we give one minute for the entire audience to note down what they felt about the speech, and they can send it personally to the speaker. So let's take one minute to complete this evaluation slip. Uh, so I request the timer to let me know after the one after we are done with one minute.
Oh, uh, should I see a red flag after one minute? Uh, um, we don't do oh. this. Uh, uh. Sorry, I was writing. I forgot. It's been a, a lot more than a minute. <laughs> We can go ahead, Akshay. Okay. Um, so the next person, it's time to call in the next evaluator. But before that, I have a very small incident to share about my favorite first time. One of my fantastic or rather first flush is when I learned the first swear word of my life. This was in my ninth grade when I sat on a different bench in my classroom and on the table, a word was inscribed. It starts with F and ends with K. I leave it to all of you to fill the two words in between. So I was, I was wondering, what does this word actually mean? And I kept asking, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little chatterbox in classrooms and, and I kept asking to everyone, what does this mean? How do I spell it? And then I was called by the teacher, Akshaya, why are you talking in the classroom? And then I said, ma'am, I want to know the meaning of this word. And she asked me, what word is that? And I ended up saying a different pronunciation of the word. And that is how I learned the first ever cuss word or swear word of my life. So joining the bandwagon or assembly or the next assembler in our Napoleon army is Toastmaster Shreya. Toastmaster Shreya's favorite first time was when she decided to step out of her house to build her empire. She fondly remembered the first time she made a meal for herself and she's quite surprised that she survived and she's alive. So let us hear more of this from her. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Toastmaster Shreya, who is going to be the evaluator for Toastmaster Garfield. Toastmaster Shreya as the next evaluator. Ladies and gentlemen, Toastmaster Shreya. Thank you, Toastmaster Akshaya, for again introducing me thrice. Makes me feel very good. Yeah, that was a very nice introduction. One more thing to share about that day. So that was the first, that was the first time I was moving out of house to my to live with my best friend of college who I had spent four years with. It was a very exciting time and we were so happy to be moving into this brand new place that we had found that was also brand new constructed. It was such a pretty house and we did not realize that there's something called rodents that exist. So I think that evening we must have spent at least two hours strategizing and killing about 50 to 60 cockroaches all over the kitchen. And that is a memory I will never forget because after that we were so tired. We sat with our brooms and that spray and hit and whatnot, just sat there in the hall going, ha, ah, this is it. We won. We got, we got redemption. So on that note today, hi everybody. Good morning slash good evening to all of you. Hope that you all have a great day or had a great day already. I am Toastmaster Shreya and today I will be evaluating the speech of Toastmaster Gao Feng. He is attempting his L1P1, that is his icebreaker speech. The purpose of the speech is to introduce oneself to the club and also learn the basic structure of a speech. Timer, please do note that the uh, time of the speech is four to six minutes. Now, you might, you might be confused or you might be fooled by the fact that this sounds like an icebreaker, like a first speech but do not. This Toastmaster is quite an experienced member of, of the Toastmaster Club. He's been there about five years, he says, and he's also finished his CC manual. So I'm pretty sure all of us here at Bangalore at least are quite excited to hear an advanced speech today. Well, that's all I have to say from my side. Uh, I'm, I'll be elucidating this, uh, my uh, report at the end of the speech. Yeah, back to you, Toastmaster Akshaya. Thank you, Toastmaster Shreya. It's story time. Laika was the goodest. Okay, goodest is not a word. I, I can see Bhargav uh, grinning. So, Laika was a little cute baby. She was only three years old, but she was docile. She was strong. She was brave. She was put on a stage and she was in a position to fight five of her contemporaries. At the age of three, she did the most miraculous thing that was possible on the planet. The pounding heart and rapid breath, frightened and overheated, she sacrificed her life for her country. Who am I talking about? Who is like us? Any guesses in the house? It was the most Dave, fantastic first, debut. The, the first dog that went to space. space. Yes, 
exactly. Yes, LIGO was the first star that went to space in Sputnik 2. So today we have another a fantastic debut hopefully maybe it will remind us of this brave debut which happened years ago so ladies and gentlemen put your hands together for toastmaster gang who gao feng who is here to give us icebreaker today is an example of the fact that no matter how tall you scale you can all you always have a beginning so ladies and gentlemen put your hands together for toastmaster gao feng <laughs> Hello, Toastmasters. Good morning and good evening. I'm Gao Feng. Uh, today I will give my second as speaker speech for persuasive influence. I will first introduce myself with some background and then I will share my past Toastmaster experience. I grew up in a very small village in the central part of China, where every family shares the same last name as man, which is Yu. I enjoyed my childhood without any electronic games, any electronic device, TV, and of course, without the internet. My memorable time was to play with classmates after school on the field. I want to ask how many of you knew about Chinese Kung Fu? Like in many of Jet Li action movies. My hometown is near the famous martial arts Shaolin Temple. Luckily, I was able to attend a college in a big city. At college, I studied electrical engineering and had the opportunity to access computers, which, is, which was very precious at that time, and learn programming. The academic training prepared me to uh, acquire knowledge and skills to become a software engineer. I have been working in networking industry uh, for some time at several companies. Now I'm a software engineer at Arista headquarters. I was in the platform team, but now I'm in the routing team. I met Vicky during our frequently park troubleshooting session. She was promoting the idea of starting a Toastmaster club at Arista. I was very curious about what Toastmaster is, and she elucidated what Toastmaster club does. I felt it was interesting, and I hope joining Toastmaster club can help me improve my communication skills. So I started my Toastmaster journey from the beginning of this club five years ago. I remember I gave my first icebreak speech a few months later after, the, after I became the, a member. I gave, I, I gave only one speech for the following year. Vicky challenged me to complete the computing communication manual. She got me through the topic selection and the publishing speech drafts. And believably, I managed to give a CC speech in one year, despite the busy work schedule. Through those speeches, my communication and public speaking skills definitely got improved. And then I relaxed and I lost my focus. It is very embarrassing that I did not give any speech for two years after my CC. Recently, I witnessed this that a few of our club members finished their CC and achieved various milestones 
this year in the very difficult shelter in place situation. They really inspired me to think about my next step for to the master. Now to the master program, I switch to pathways. I need to choose a path which can benefit me for effective communication. For some of you who are parents, you would understand me. Very often I found difficulty in talking to my kids. I would like to have the ability to get them to do what's the best for them. So I choose the persuasive influence path. My lesson from completing my CC is to schedule the speech ahead of time and put it in the calendar and stick to it. That forced me to think about speech topics in daily life. I still remember that I had a speech about my scary EV driving story. My EV almost died on the highway, running out of battery. Okay, having an advance to the master speak as your mentor will push you and motivate you. Having a small group of members who can brainstorm topic ideas and check each other's progress will create a positive atmosphere for giving speech. I hope that this new pathway will empower me to develop effective communication skills Looking forward to working with all of you. Thank you. It looks like Akshya has lost connectivity. She looks very frozen. Uh, she looks frozen. I can't even see her. All right, so yeah. she'll come back and finish her story. For now, let's just jump to our table topic master. Oh, let's give I a think, minute to, yeah. to write the feedback. I've, oh, sorry. Yeah. St yeah, yeah, I, st yeah, I started the timer, so we have a minute. All right. So that's one minute. Thank you, uh, Toastmaster. So let's take, let's also, uh, it's time to lay the table. So the table is going to have some interesting delicacies. So let me not take a lot of your time and it's, let, let's quickly head towards laying the table. To lay the table with a lot of delicacies, please welcome our table topic master of the day, Toastmaster Pregya. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Toastmaster Pregya. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay, thank you. So ever since I become a member of Toastmasters, every time I come across an article, a video, a book, three thoughts uh, come across my mind. Can I use this topic as a theme for the next meeting if I become the PMOD? Can I use this as a theme of my speech if at all I give one the next week? Or shall I use this as a theme of table topics if and when I become a table topics master? And for fantastic first, this is my first experience as a table topics master. 
And only last week I stumbled across this uh, article about uh, something very ridiculous and pretty irrational. I thought, why not use it as a theme when I become the first day, when I when I become the table topics master for the first time. So the theme for today's uh, TT uh, table topics would be absurd lawsuits. To elucidate, <laughs> uh, I'll give an example. I am a person who was shocked, who who decided to sue uh, Jelly Belly for claiming on their food label that they use evaporated cane juice instead of stating that they use sugar. I was oblivious to the fact that they use sugar and it is harmful for me and I decided to sue them. This is one such absurd and rather trivial lawsuit. What I'll do henceforth is for every uh, uh, speaker, I'll present one such lawsuit, a, uh, a ridiculous one, and you have to stand in the position of the plaintiff. That is the one who's accusing or one who's suing that other company and you have to argue your case. To make things interesting, only once your uh, uh, turn is done, I will mention what was the real incident and uh, whether the case was dismissed or did they win. So let me, uh, can you have any volunteers? Can anyone, uh, can you use the raise hand feature uh, on Zoom? Who wants to go first? Okay. Also, uh, I, I, I got your name right. Yes, you so, you so, you so. Okay, sorry. Now, so let's see what is your case. Now, before stepping out of uh, your home for work that day, you always watch the television for the weather report. And that day, the weather forecast for the weatherman was it's going to be a bright sunny day. You step out, voila, it's raining. You then decide to sue the weatherman and his TV station because you went out of the house unprepared, you are drenched in the rain, you took ill and you missed work. You are the plaintiff, argue your case. Shall I repeat or you got? I'm okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Fellow Toastmasters, my name is Hughes Lehtinen. And yesterday, I was preparing for my regular work day. I was getting ready, checking the weather report, of course, as, as we all do every day. It was, it was supposed to be a sunny day. That's what the weather, weatherman Mark was telling. So I put my new leather shoes on. I just, just got those last weekend from the store. And I, I started walking to the, to the bus stop outside. And it was a little bit cloudy. I was surprised, but I, I thought that, uh, that that must be just a fluke. That, that, that will last on a few minutes and then it will be sunny. But suddenly it started pouring rain. And it was such an outpour that my new leather shoes got wet and you know this these shoes are not meant to be used in in rain so they are now all all spoiled and weather mark weatherman mark is the reason they got spoiled that's his job to tell me how's the weather going to be that's a simple job like it's just just tell me how the weather is going to be outside and uh, nothing else. And he don't, cannot even do his work right. So now I have the shoes that are completely spoiled. Also, my other clothes got drenched. So when I went to the office, everyone was laughing at me like, what's, what's up you? So you are all, all wet. Why didn't you take umbrella? Well, of course I didn't have umbrella because of weatherman Mark. And that's why I'm going to seek from damages. I want new shoes and I want to make sure that the television station will replace Weathermark, Weatherman Mark with someone who actually knows their business. Back to you, Ms. Table Topics Master. That was a great improv. So this had it happened in 1996 in an Israeli city of Haifa, and the plaintiff got damages of a thousand grand, so of a thousand dollars, not a grand, yeah, thousand dollars there. Okay, 
So how many of you have heard about the show called Dexter? It was famous uh, Showtime. Okay, I see. Uh, I, just keep your hands raised. I'll just walk through this. Abhi ji, there's Yuslev, there's uh, Charlene, there's Rajiv, there's Anand. Okay, I'll go for Anand because he's not a role taker here. Okay, let me read out this. So you're at uh, the Grand Central subway station. Uh, you're at the top of the stairs. And then you suddenly see this gigantic poster of Dexter, you know, that wrapped in plastic, his eyes are open. You're terrified. And you fall down the stairs and you enjoy yourself. You decide to sue Showtime for putting up such a poster, for inducing fear and disturbing you and causing you to injure yourself. If you are to sue Showtime now, <laughs> Present your case. So this is a Grand Central, right? Sorry. Yeah, Grand Central. So this was the first time I was going. Hello, fellow Toastmasters. And thank you, Miss uh, Table Topic Master, for the wonderful topic. I went to New York for the first time with my kid who is one year old today and it was such a beautiful city and I was like wow I should see this historical place the Grand Central. I walk in there with my son and what do I see? I see people around but I do see this this poster of texture with his eyes brooding out. My four-year-old daughter was so scared. She was like Papa, this man is going to come and eat me. I was terrified. I have two kids. And what do these people try to show? Horror? Fear? Isn't the man, this world, powerful man of the world, not enough to create fear and horror in the whole in the world that I need CBS right now to show me this? I decided. I am going to sue this company. I took my, I took this case very, very personally. And I wanted, think about this. These, these poor, these small kids are coming to Toastmaster sessions and trying to learn how to become better leaders. And what, what these shows are trying to show you, they are trying to show you fear. They're trying to show them what horror is, what serial killing is. Is this what you want to show your kids? Uh, what, what you want them to learn? No. And this has become a this has become a big lawsuit, and we are going to win billions of dollars, and everyone's going to get a stimulus check. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so just like celebrities making grand uh, you know, uh, appearances, your kids came in the right time and proved your point. So kudos to them. Okay. Okay, so let's see. Uh, okay, so many of you have been to Subway, I suppose, I mean, across India, US, everywhere. So how many of you have had the foot long sandwich? I've heard of it or, you know, a regular uh, visitors to Subway. <laughs> So, Shalini, do you see or raise your hand? Hind? Any volunteers? You can get to sue Subway. If you're angry at customer service or anything as such, this is your chance. Who wants to volunteer? Uh, has anyone volunteered? Yep, Charlene is. Okay, Charlene. Okay. So Charlene, uh, you purchase. Uh, so before doing that, uh, I forgot to say the suit, uh, the cl class action suit against uh, Showtime didn't go through because the law, the judge decided that it is not the responsibility of uh, television networks to maintain staircases at <laughs> Grand Station. Okay. So coming to Subway, uh, you ordered a foot long sandwich and you measure it and you see that it is one inch shorter than the foot that they advertise. You feel that Subway is conniving and deceiving their customers and decide to sue them. Present your case. Your Honor, you are looking at a woman that suffered. 
and also a dog that suffered miserably. One day, I took my dog to <laughs> Subway Sandwich, and I, because I saw this ad on the TV, it says, foot long sandwich and full of goodies, and my dog was excited, I was thrilled. I went to get a sandwich, I had it planned. Nine inches for me and the rest for my dog. There would be pastronias for my dog and vegetables for me and tofu for both of us. And it was a very happy trip to the store. When I got the sandwich, the dog was looking at me, wanted the whole thing. I was like, no, I am the one that's, I'm the one that's hungry. So I took out my ruler and measured the sandwich. The ad was lying. The store was denying the accusation. It's not one foot long. It was one inch short. That's the one, that's the only foot that's for my dog. And I, I didn't give it to my dog. And he, she sparked and she yanked me out and, and I fell on the ground and it created a whole chaotic scenario in the store. And everybody dropped the sandwich on the, uh, on the floor and everybody was hungry. See, honor, it's not only me that suffered, it's the animal, it's the, everybody in the store, it's the whole world that watched the ad. The suffering, can you imagine? That's why there are so many hungry kids in this world. <laughs> look at China, look at India. It's all because of that shortage of food. Is that ad, that Subway sandwich store, that's responsible. I'm here to represent the whole world to sue the store, to recommend the, the, the company and to give us the whole foot long sandwich, your honor. Here's my case. Back to you, TT Master. Awesome, Charlie. So the, what happened with this case was the plaintiffs couldn't get money, but the attorneys did. They got 520 uh, grand dollars for suing uh, Subway. So you can take it as a virtual win for yourself too. Okay. Uh, let's go for any Red Bull fans out there, anyone who's angry or I don't know, wants to sue Red Bull. Or even if you like Red Bull, actually. Any volunteers? Uh, it's okay. Let me pick. Uh, since there are shop. Arun, Arun, you want to take a try? Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a try. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Red Bull has this. Uh, pretty cool uh, uh, tagline called Red Bull gives you wings. You realize that uh, by purchasing Red Bull, it did not give you any wings, of course, uh, figuratively speaking, but it didn't, it, didn't, it didn't even energize you. I mean, it's an energy drink. You're pretty angry and you decide to sue Red Bull. Present your case. Red Bull gives you wings. So figuratively it's wings and actually it is supposed to be like energy, neither of which was true. You're deceived and uh... okay. Yeah, I I normally don't drink soda or any kind of uh, drink, but then I thought, okay, let me get started. Let uh, let me see if I need some energy. Let me try out something. And I was looking at the looking at the break room in our office, and there was Red Bull. I thought that was one day I can. I can I can get some energy. I can probably go out and and um, probably try some hang gliding or something of that sort. So I read I read that it said Red Bull gives you wings. So I thought maybe I can at least, if not hang gliding, I can just I can at least uh, use that energy to jump off a small wall or something and things. But apparently, when I when I drank that and I couldn't even get on the wall, so I thought this was this was a hoax, and this cannot this cannot really uh, do anything. Just but uh, just but just it's it's just play, it's just like plain water. It didn't give me any energy, so I might as well had a glass of water and wouldn't have paid for that. So so I thought, okay, this is 
this is something which uh, which is absolutely a hoax and i i think i should i should be in fact uh, be paid my money back and also pay also be uh, compensated for the loss that i had with respect to time and the effort that i put in thanks thanks arun okay so oitc folks uh, we need a volunteer for table topics come on who wants to volunteer for the next one let's see everyone is intelligently turned off the camera so i can't even trap prakash <laughs> uh, um, we might be short of time actually uh, uh so i yeah so we have time for just for one more i just spoke to the timer so we're just going to wrap it up after this so any volunteers okay rahul uh, let's have you here rahul are you there yeah yeah okay so we'll keep the short uh, you just a minute okay you order uh, a cool drink from starbucks and you realize that there is more ice half the container is full of ice and you feel deceived that you didn't get the requisite quantity of your cool drink you get to sue starbucks and it's pretty pan and you know it's there in india as well so yeah it's pretty relatable okay your honor on a uh, very on a typical day starbucks there are uh, starbucks sells 25 uh, 25 cold drinks per hour or 25 cold drinks per minute and there are 500 such outlets in india alone compared if you take about all the world there are at least 5000 starbucks outlets and when you consider all the uh, all the uh, uh, wrong calculations that's happening Starbucks is actually stealing millions of dollars from uh, the normal people. Now, I not only I'm I am not only fighting this case on behalf of myself, but all for all for all those people who have worked so hard and who probably can afford only one or two uh, Starbucks drinks a uh, year in India at least, and they. decide to go for that particular drink and they all they find out is they are short of their own drink so i request you to take this matter into uh i request you to give a lot of thought into this issue and uh, make uh, ma- make it right for all those people who have suffered from this uh that's it for my side thanks uh, rahul so this case did happen uh, but uh, the plaintiff lost they the judge asked him to just ask them to put less ice which <laughs> and in case of red bull which i missed out saying uh, the plaintiff got a compensation of 640 uh, grand so that's a good amount i'll hand over next uh, to uh, rajiv uh, who will collect votes for the best table topics yeah uh, the right time here. shall be one. okay yeah sure yeah thanks rajiv yeah so the uh, candidates for the table topics session was huzo anand charlene arun and rahul so you guys can actually ping me via chat personally and send the votes i'll collect them and i'll give the report at the end okay uh, i think back to general evaluator ligwa thank you rajiv <laughs> This is a wonderful session. Now let's start our evaluation part. First, I would like to invite our first evaluator, Neha, to give the evaluation to our first speaker, Hing. Welcome, Neha. Thanks, Liwa. Hi, Hing. Thank you for your speech titled "Accidental Protege." I felt that you are a very passionate and humorous speaker and complimenting the audience in the beginning was a very smart move and to make us ready to listen to you your speech had uh, many good takeaways and today i'm going to elucidate three of those 
and give you one or two suggestions to improve the speech for future. First, I really like the passion in your voice and the emotions with which you portrayed your thoughts while talking about your friends, your mentors, um, your um, adolescence days, and then um, how you are now. I like that feeling that you were showing through your words and your expressions throughout your speech. Secondly, I, uh, I really like the part that you had um, lots of humor in the speech. Though this was uh, a speech about mentoring and things around that, I didn't expect to find uh, so much humor in it, but you put it uh, really well and it didn't feel out of place at all. Some good snippets from your speech were like, I acted like I was thinking a lot. Uh, the use of the word accidental, accidental mentor, accidental protege, uh, those things all came together in a very cohesive way without making a lot, like showing any forced effort. And it also makes it easier uh, to retain audiences' attention if you have humor in the speeches. Thirdly, uh, not only did you share your personal stories with us, but you also gave us two very important learnings. One, that real learning comes in understanding people's differences. And second, that listening is the most important gift you can give to everybody, uh, to anybody. So uh, thanks for those learnings that you shared with everyone. Now, if I make, uh, make some suggestions for uh, improvements uh, for future, I would say that, uh, like you wanted me to focus on your vocal variety. Uh, first, I did not notice any mumbling. Uh, that was one of your concerns. I didn't notice any of that in your speech. Um, and you did have some vocal variety where you were stressing on some words and some thoughts. Uh, but I felt that your speech had good content, which could be used to enhance the vocal variety. For example, you had uh, lots of conversations with your uh, friend um, when you were in 10th grade and then later on when um, you were talking about marriage. So those conversations can be changed to dialogues and you can deliver those as uh, uh, like dialogue delivery between two people and act that out and bring that whole conversation to life, which will make your speech more effective. Uh, secondly, um, your speech was very well put together in terms of content and organization. But one of the speech objectives was how Toastmasters envisions mentoring. I felt that you, that part lagged a bit. You could have elucidated that more. And, all, and in turn, you could have also encouraged audience to take up mentoring in Toastmasters, which is a very big part of Toastmasters. And you could have uh, encouraged the audience to take up mentoring in real life because how it benefited you. You could have also uh, uh, put that on the audience to take that as an action, that take up mentoring. Overall, I felt that your speech helped the audience know you a lot better. And we have uh, some idea about your life, uh, your experiences, and it helped us connect with you. And I really enjoyed your speech. I hope we can do this again and I get to hear more from you. Thank you. Thank you, Neha, for the very detailed feedback. I noticed uh, uh, our speaker, Hinda, was uh, writing down notes and uh, listened very carefully. That's how our Toastmaster um, are pay, uh, pay, um, are, are helping us, each of us, uh, making progress. So we speak here, and we got the candidate feedback to help us uh, make more progress next time. Next, I would like to invite our second evaluator, um, Shaya, she will give the evaluation to our speaker, Gautam. Welcome, Shaya. Thank you, Liwa. First of all, congratulations, Gautam, for finishing your L1 P1, that is the icebreaker speech. It was a very, the overall tone of the speech was very, very sweet and cute, and it kept me smiling throughout, and that was something that I really liked. There are some things about your speech that I think you got right, and some things that I feel could be improved upon. Let me start with what, what I think went really well. I really liked how you started. It was a humble start and you built a visual visualization around how, around you in your village as a kid. And I started imagining you in, in China, in your small village as a happy child. And that was a good imagination and a good narrative. I liked that. And I like the fact that you, started your speech by interacting with the audience and asking them and then immediately building a connect with your audience at that point. 
the second thing that i liked about your speech was the chronological structure so you maintained a chronology without going back and forth too much making it easy for us to interpret and understand you at different stages of your life the things that you had asked me to take a look at beforehand was gra grammar confidence and voice tone i felt that your confidence was good and your grammar was also right but some things that you could work on one thing is your vocal variety i feel that you could have used different types of words maybe some more complex words words in your speech i also feel that your voice tone could have been improved when you're talking about something exciting you could feel a bit louder when you're trying to build some mystery somewhere you could have been a bit you know on the lower lower tone so i do think your voice your voice variety i mean your voice tone could have some improvement Uh, the other thing that i feel could have some improvement is that i wish you had elucidated more about different stages of your life so that i could have gotten to know you maybe a tad bit better i did get to know you but i do wish there was something maybe about your teenage years or some some different stages could have gotten a bit more content of your life one challenge that i do think will do good for you is building having a speech and building a visual narrative because i saw you do it in the beginning so i know that this this is something you could work on and you said that the you you want to help you want to improve the interaction with your kids and i really think building a visual narrative where you're making the children making children imagine will actually get them closer to you because they have such vivid imagination so i think that is something that could help you in maybe one of the speeches ahead Uh, that's all i had from my side congratulations again it was a very nice sweet speech and i'm very glad to have evaluated it thank you back to you liza thank you saya to give the detailed uh, uh, comments about uh, how golfen can improve his speech next i'd like to invite our grammarian adopt to talk about the great giver grammarian report welcome back up what an awesome session it has been i was all ready to be a good grammar police but my network didn't help me i missed so many sentences but i still could spot some mistakes in grammar uh i would spot i would list some of them attend a college at a big city could have been attend college at a big city a few of a club member could have been a flu should have been uh, a few of our club members its members is the plural there started walking to the bus stop could have been started walking towards the bus stop uh, and i think that's all i have uh, and uh, the word of the day was used four times it was used twice by shreya thank you shreya and uh, it was used once by gofeng and it was used once by neha thank you all thank you so much thank you bhagat next i'd like to invite our accountant sushma to give the accountant report welcome sushma thanks liwa it's been a long meeting and i have quite a few I mean, a long report to present starting with the uh, akshaya i saw i mean i did not see any uh, as or any filler words in the beginning but once you had the internet glitch you had quite a few double clutches and it caught you off guard i guess so there were quite a few as and double clutches there and nothing after that again that was really good liwa some as less than 10 bharga during your uh, report you had few us like less than 5 and a double clutch max i did not catch anything neha during your report you have very short us i counted at least 20 of them and few likes hind is the star performer today he did not i at least did not catch any filler words in his speech that was really great shreya i loved how you are into what you're saying and you're thinking while you're talking i guess so i caught at least 
14 double clutches. Maybe you can focus on that. Gofung, yeah, good job Gofung. There were no filler words that I could catch. I didn't notice any. Pragmya again, uh, less than five. Us, you so <laughs> just uh, uh, I'm just returning from a jury duty for I was in jury duty for three weeks, and I was so focused on what evidence you're presenting that I <laughs> forgot to <laughs> note down us or arms. Anand, uh, again the same thing happened. <laughs> I, uh, your kids with your kids and all like hardly was able to concentrate on uh, the filler words. Arun again double clutch, clutches. There were 11 of them. Rahu double clutches. So today's winner is double clutches people. So maybe we can focus there how to avoid those. Back to you Liva. Thank you Soshima for the detailed report. Uh, last uh, we have our timer. Uh, Max, to the timer report. Welcome, Max. Thank you, <clears throat> Lihua. I'll, I'll just read them. I'll go really fast. Uh, Hint, you were seven minutes and 30 seconds, so right on the edge. Gelfeng, six minutes, 10. Very good. A little bit over, but still good. On the table topics, uh, Yusuf 219, Anand 201, Charlene 215, Arun 125, Rahul 120. All of you were good. On the evaluations, Neha 342. Sorry, Neha, you were disqualified. Shreya 250. On the reports, uh, Bargab 107, Sushma 240. Thank you. Back to you, Mrs. General Evaluator. Thank you, Max. Uh, last is the general evaluator um, to, to give a comment. So, um, first, I would say it's uh, very exciting. I get, get to know more people and get to learn new things from each other. Um, but I would like to give this opportunity maybe to one of our um, members here, uh, Jonathan. Um, if you are able to talk, I want to hear your voice because uh, in one of the themes in our uh, officer meeting is how we, can, uh, how we can make our meeting more interesting, more funny, to attract more members to come more frequently. So I'd like to hear um, our member, Jonathan, to give comments about today's meeting, what you would like to um, our HQ quarter to give more to our uh, meeting. Welcome, Jonathan. You might have noticed that I ha this is the first time that I attended in about two months, around two months. So I'm not sure how the previous two months have gone. I think actually this meeting illustrates pretty well on how you can attract the right folks. There was a, well, one downside is that it lasted a little bit longer. Notice that we're going over the hour that we usually reserve by probably another 30 minutes. So this is going to be like an hour, 30 minutes meeting. However, I really enjoyed the backgrounds, the way that our Toastmaster prepared additional content. It's actually a lot of work and I really appreciate that. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, I would like, uh, we would like to, we will discuss about those comments and the thinking how we can make our meeting more, uh, more attractive. Uh, next, uh, I would give the stage to our surgeon of arm, Rajiv, to announce the winner of today's table topic. Welcome, our team. Thank you, Leva. So, are you guys ready to hear about the public's favorite uh, Sue? <laughs> so, drum rolls. So the winner of the table topics uh, uh, master session was Charlene. So I think everyone liked the subway that I was doing. I think I'll hand back this stage back to Abhijit or Vicky like you, for the closing remarks. Go ahead, Vicky. Oh, all right, okay. <laughs> well, it's a great meeting. Thank you, everybody. So I'm very happy to be part of it. So I think as you know, I'm not sure I was late. So I 
but I used to go at Charter's Club because Toastmasters experience helped me transform my life, both personally and professionally. Even though I had to apologize for being late, but however, you knew that I have to say no to a sales VP who would be talking nonstop. I thought that must be uh, something that I pick up from Toastmaster. I think before, if the VP talking, I would just listen. But today I say, well, I have to meeting, I have to go. <laughs> so I feel pretty good about that, right? So another thing is that I think Toastmaster really helped me communicate with uh, family members and people around me as well. Uh, some of you in our club knew that I recently got married. And some of you know that it's how hard to talk to your spouse. But as some of you talk about the importance of being a mentor, believe it or not, my husband actually asked me to review some of his uh, difficult email that he had to write. I thought that was pretty interesting. So when he asked, of course, I'm willing to help. But at the same time, he was also very uh, interested in helping me to review some other people's script. Like I was uh, checking on Gelfo's script last night, and he was like glued to me. I was like, oh, I want to help, I want to help. <laughs> so believe me, that Toastmaster experience could be very fun, right? So it could be also valuable. So I hope that, you know, all of you can gain the knowledge from being part of the Toastmaster community. Of course, there's no free lunch. Uh, if you like Charlene know to shoot people, you might get a lot of free lunch. But in Toastmaster, not exactly have free lunch. The more value you put in, the better you get, right? So that's my message to people. Continue, come to the meeting, com continue to put in your effort. And hopefully together we'll be a stronger community to help each other grow. So thank you. I'm hoping, you know, we'll have more joint meeting like this. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Vicky for a wonderful you know, closing remark for this uh, momentous meeting. Very warm wishes to current club members of Orators in the Cloud, but even more warm wishes for my, my friends from Great America speakers, my ex-club, because let's, let's admit it, right? Uh, the first love is always the one that is the closest to your heart. So I think I was the only one to whom the poster first date sounded pretty ironical because it's felt more like a homecoming to me rather than a first date when I attended this meeting today. I even wore my California shirt to kind of hop on the other side of the fence and feel more like Great America speakers. I don't know how much time I have today, but let's face it, I don't get to speak to Great America speakers that often, so I'm gonna take my time. <laughs> today, I would like to share one thought. Uh, while being raised in India, one, th one phrase that stuck with me was taught to us over and over in school was unity in diversity. I think that was school's way of telling us uh, or making us feeling patriotic about a country like India, where there's just so many languages, so many religions, so many, uh, you know, uh, gods that are worshipped and everything and how everything comes together with one national patriotic uh, feeling. The only next time I felt about unity and diversity in application was with Toastmasters. When Vicky started that club and I hopped on and suddenly everybody coming from different perspectives started showing, uh, you know, showing up on the meetings and starting showing uh, their vulnerable side, really relating their stories, which is almost uncommon, right? Your friends, except for the few close ones would never tell you what is happening in their life. Uh, your course, your peers, your uh, colleagues will of course never tell you those kind of things. But in that vulnerability is what I think uh, created a strong bond, a trust that we are all in it together to, you know, go to our own milestones, but we take the journey together. So I think I am, I'm really, really glad that all of you actually got together, uh, latched onto this idea of a rendezvous meeting. And, um, you know, we are all here together. Hope all of you had an enjoyable first date. Uh, I would say that you know, once we close this meeting, um, apart from just having a rendezvous meeting, enjoying Toastmaster session and everything, I really wish we can do more of this. But most importantly, I wish a great sense of camaraderie and great sense of community for, and I wish that on all of us in and outside of Toastmasters. And because I think that is the most important takeaway for Toastmasters. With that, life is all about experiences and I hope you all had a fun and enriching one today. Good, have a good day in, in the US and have a great night and a great weekend to all of you. I would love to see you more often. Thank you.